example, that 10 tons is now locked up as carbon, but it's, temp it's called 30 tons of CO2 removed from the atmosphere. 30% of the roots below the ground have absorbed that carbon, and now that carbon's locked up in the ground. So this is just a big air filter. We're cleaning the air, releasing clean oxygen, and keeping this as carbon. When we turn this into a building material, that's chemergy. Chemergy is the process of taking a plant-based material, a plant base, and turning it into a plant-based material, which is what we used to do all the way up until about World War II. So question, can, uh, can hemp like this be grown in places that is uh, heavily saturated in CO2 like India? Absolutely. CO2 is all over the planet. It, it, it's just, it's evenly all throughout the atmosphere. So for a million years, we had a, about a 320 ppm parts per million of CO2 in the atmosphere. We, lived in a, we live in a Goldilocks planet. 320 ppm of CO2 in the atmosphere. Everything was really nice. We didn't have, you know, we had made, you know, small ice ages, nothing, you know, earth shattering for a million years. All of a sudden, in the last 125 years, we went from 320 to over 420 ppm. We can argue all day long about where it came from. Chances are it's all the oil we pumped out of the ground and burned and put that CO2 into the atmosphere. So now we need to pull 100 ppm out of the atmosphere to get back to where we were 125 years ago. This is how we're going to do it. We're going to grow our way out of this climate crisis. So when we build a hemp home, we're taking all this CO2, locking it up in these plants, and now building a home out of it, we can build our way out of the CO2 climate crisis. We can make clothing. This is a hemp shirt. This is a hemp shirt. This will last me for the rest of my life. I'll never, I'll, I'll have this t-shirt for the rest of my life. It's not going to wear out. You can wear a hemp shirt three, four days in a row. The pits don't stink. It's antimicrobial, antibacterial. So as a guy, we do the smell test. You know, you get your yeah. chair, your basket, and you're clean. You know, and if it's on the chair, you take the smell and hemp shirts. You know, three or four days wear a hemp shirt. Marcel That's amazing. Hemp. Yep, he's out of uh, Santa Barbara. Wow. So, and then this is out of a guy out of San Diego. Uh, he's from Hungary. He's actually nice. the president of the Hungarian Hemp Association, wow. uh, Peter Peter Nari. And then uh, my socks, uh, those are from Richard Dash up in Santa Barbara. I've got a blanket from Ukraine that's hemp. I'll show you later in the trailer. And it's just, you know. So all this clothing is lifelong clothing. And you buy a pair of hemp pants, I mean, unless you're a brick mason, you're never going to wear those pants out. That's the beauty of hemp. My girlfriend bought me two really nice long sleeve shirts at the Goodwill. Somebody probably had them 20 years. I, I brought them back to Dash because I know the brand. Mm -hmm. I brought them back and I said, hey, look at this. We got these for two bucks each. He sells them for 80. Wow. You know, now, and he's like, wow, he goes, those are like 20 years old. That was one of my first runs. Wow. So, yeah, just amazing. So somebody died, bought them and died 20 years later, and they ended up in a Goodwill, and I, now I'll have them for the rest of my life. Now, do people eat hemp? This so, open? not this, the seed. The seed. Yeah. So, okay. so you can juice the leaves. You can uh, press these leaves. You get super, super good. Some of the best vitamin nutritional value is in hemp leaves. Um, I have a, a friend, Chris Boucher, he's a, considered a hemp OG. He actually does a free dry, freeze dried method where they harvest these, put them in a refrigerator truck immediately, take it to their processing plant, and basically turn it into a powder that you can mix. And it has all the bioavailability of this. So maybe the one gram of this, it would be like eating three pounds of actual hemp. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Who should plant this at the house? I'll well, get you some well, of that, to check Dennis. The, uh... gonna, you'll like that. It's really healthy food, super healthy. Was this ever illegal in the United States to grow hemp? Absolutely. So it was only made illegal. Um, William Randolph Hearst, the whole story, you'll have to look into it. Uh, I won't go on totally about it, but briefly, William Randolph Hearst, newspaper conglomerate, he had bought millions of acres of uh, forest to turn into his newspapers because pulping for, for the mm -hmm. paper. Somebody invented the reading machine that would separate the fiber from the herd, so now you could make paper easily, not, you know, not all everything done by hand. And he says, oh man, I just screwed myself. We need to outlaw this. It's just like with the ground people smoke, looks the same. So let's just, get, let's just outlaw the whole thing. And that's how hemp became illegal. 